Uh, my name is Wei Lau. I'm with US STEM. I'm here to talk to you about uh, robotics, STEM, and you. So this is our mission. We want to get more people involved in STEM. You know, and so it's uh, on our website. It's the US STEM Foundation vision is to grow national talent, get more students, become you know engineers, more responsible citizens. But how I look at it, you know, what I really look at it is make smarts really cool through robotic competition. So I have. Uh, Two videos, or well, maybe three, to show you what it is that I do. Oops. <laughs> well, we don't want to, there's quite a lot of videos, so just to show you the next one. This one, oh, there's no sound. Oh, I broke the sound, but this is one of just uh, robots shooting basketballs, and that was in 2012. This is 2013 at the national championships in St. Louis, where the Rams play in their stadium. Three, two, one, go! And we're off, final one, two, in autonomous. Lots of shots bouncing off of the edges of the goal. Texas Torque, Gillibees, go shooting again, using their floor pickups, and now the driver's hit. So those are, what I just showed you were five-foot robots, and what you saw that was the first 20 seconds of a competition where it was fully autonomous, built mostly by students with the help of mentors like you, or, you know, adults like you. So why should you do this? Well, we have pretty good jobs, and we, we should give back to the community. And it's very good for your health to do this. You know, medical professionals have said that people who give back live longer and are happier. But if you're a little more self-centered, if you want to plan to live to a nice old age, having more STEM professionals mean that our economy will be stronger, which means social, there will be more money in Social Security. <laughs> and that is important, guys. All right? You have kids? I know I talked to a few of you. Some of you have kids. Some of you are thinking of having kids. Well, if you get them involved in robotics or, or STEM field, there's a lot of scholarships. Like First Robotics has about three to four million dollars worth of scholarships they can't give away because not enough kids are, uh, are competing in these events. I mean, they are giving away 20 million dollars worth of scholarship every year, and they still have money left over. So there's a lot of money for, you know, in scholarships for this. Now, you also meet a lot of people. Everyone here, you know, we're software people mostly, and we're afraid of hardware. Well, the people in the first robotics team, you get all kinds. You get business people, you get graphics arts people, you get software people, and when we talk about software people, I'm not just talking about web developers. There's signal, digital signal processing people, analog signal processing people operating system developers, real-time operating system developers, every, all kinds of, you know, from all walks of life, just on the engineering field. And then on the other side, you also get the business people. And those are the most important people you'll, you'll ever meet because if you want to uh, get money for your ideas inside, this is the biggest marketing uh, opportunity you'll ever have. There's a lot of money that when they are involved and they see you involved, they know you, they're willing to open their wallets to you, to your ideas. You, can, you will be able to talk to the CEO of Fortune 500 companies if you get involved in these events. So, you know, th those are some of the more materialistic things, but I love to play with sensors. And one of the things I know when I've done robotics is like gyros, accelerometers, vision systems. You can go to a book and get some of, you know, look them up and whatever, but there are lots of them out there. If you go joining the robotics team, you have someone who has gone through and figured out, okay, what are the easiest sensors and that work well that you can, with the lowest barrier to entry. Uh, laser cutters, water, you know, cutting with water jets, uh, powder coating robots, mills, lathes, all that equipment. Now, that's very expensive. You can get access to all of that. And the most important thing, how much fun did we all have today or, and yesterday? Lots, right? Well, we, if you were to join a robotics team, you get to have this year round. 
So, I mean, how do we um, do this? The, the, this is five of some of our biggest programs. First Robotics, First Tech Challenge, First Lego League, Vex Robotics, and Zero Robotics. Uh, first Robotics is the five-foot robot I just showed you. First Tech Challenge are the foot and a half robots that I'll show you a little later. First Lego League, the Lego Mindstorm, I don't know if you, any of you have seen that. That's for the elementary skid school, but it's also a great entry level robot for people who just want to start putting things and just getting their hands dirty. Vex Robotics is another program out there that's similar to you know, First Tech Challenge. And Zero Robotics, if you want to do something different, that's a program by MIT, and they provide a simulator for you to control satellites. The top 25 or 50, depends on the year, get to have their program be put on a satellite and compete on the International Space Station. So lots of opportunity to have lots of fun. So this is uh, one of our first robots. You know, I forgot it's about four foot, four and a half foot that we built. I think this was our second year we built this. And we built it to capture those, in a, those tubes and hang them. This is another robot that's similar. And we built this robot probably about uh, two or three years ago. And that's, uh, so this is an evolution of learning. So one of the things uh, that what we talked about was you know, how afraid we are of electronics. I was just like you. I'm a software guy at work. I do big data development. So I never touch hardware at work. So joining this robotics team, I helped build this robot right here. And so this thing has, uh, has a, a lift that goes all the way up to 10 feet and hangs things. So in, in this game, the higher you hang, you know, so right up there on the right-hand side. Is that right? Yes, that's the right-hand side. You'll see there are the hooks for them to hang the tubes on. So the higher you hang them, the more points you get. On the left-hand side, you'll see a really big ball. And so it's a different challenge. So every year we have a different challenge. It requires you to build a different robot use different skills, and so that's how big, you know, that robot is five feet tall, and that's how big, you know, that gives you an idea how big, you know, what they have to manipulate. So you're doing something different every year. It's not the same thing. You're not just building a robot, putting the same code, making it move. You, you have different challenges. And that is the field they're playing on for that, uh, for that robot, those balls. They're, they're racing the robot around and lifting that ball and throwing them over those rails. It's more points if you get them over rail. So, so different challenge. And so this is a robot we built last year to shoot Frisbee. And you saw that game. where they just, I don't know if you noticed, but that was fully autonomous. Not only did they just shoot the Frisbees and get them in, but they also picked up some of the Frisbees off the ground. So there were cameras, vision systems on there. And besides shooting the Frisbee, this is a pyramid which they had to climb up with their robots challenges, you know, different things you can do. This is a robot we built two years ago where we're shooting basketballs. So, and so same thing, different robot, different challenges, different types of fun. So these are our kids. And you can see them screaming. And oh, I don't know, the, the adults in the background are a little out of uh, focus but they're also jumping out down as they won the national, this is actually an international event. We get teams from China, Australia, Japan, Israel, England, all over the world. So they're screaming because they just won the national championship. So the one thing is we will always play harder than we will work. And so we're, and how do we make uh, science, technology, engineering fun? I just show you, you know, all, all the games they play and everything they did. So Lego Mindstorm, the entry level robot, and these are the elementary school kids. Uh, slightly older, oh, those were in you know, first grade kindergarten, this is second, third, fourth graders. They're, and even when they get into uh, middle school, we can't seem to stop them. We, we try, you know, they still wanna play. Uh, and they're playing on a 93 inch, uh, seven foot by three foot table on the, on the Lego robots. As they grow older, we get them to play on a foot and a half robots. So, so, so this, this is some of the robots that the kid, we help the kids build. And they're playing on 12-foot fields. Oh, 
So remember that, that little girl I showed you earlier? They grow up, they don't lose, uh, they don't get inhibited. They become fully formed uh, adults who have, who have no shame and are really out there. So, oh, but if, you know, playing a robot on the ground isn't for you, we also have Sea Perch, so th that's underwater robotics. So we have teams who are building robots to pick up things, or they make a trade-off and they build on the bottom, they build robots, that, they change the design and make a robot that can go fast. But one of the hardest things we have here is, you know, we're afraid to play with hardware. Well, this is a chance to really play with hardware. You can go into these schools, ask a software person, get trained up on mills and laves, and it won't cost you any money, and they'll want to welcome to have you come there. And all you have to do is provide your expertise in software. I think it's a pretty good trade-off. So everyone can build. These are some of our students. You know, they never touch a drill in their life. Girls, not only boys can do this. Girl, we get girls to do it too. You'll see the students that they're staying up late at night, and this is what you can do to help them. Oh, pneumatics. Some of you guys are involved in home automation, and you're building, and you're you know using servos. Pneumatics can provide a lot more power. You're afraid of pneumatics. This is a great place to learn how to play with pneumatics. This, you know, it's for you. Remember physics? Some of you might have thought this was challenging and have been afraid, or you have kids who have thought of this challenging, and you're having a hard time getting them to do this. Well, it's not a problem if they had to shoot a basketball, and if they learned those equations, it means points. Just like some kids, you know, spend hours, you know, practice swimming ball, They'll spend hours mastering those equations and the friction and real world, uh, real world uh, events just to deal with it. Real world conditions, that's what I meant to say. Algebra. Some, you know, there are so many people who say, what good is algebra? Something as a simple ratio allows you to figure out, combine that with a camera and changes in images, allows you to figure out exactly where you are. We have robots with cameras on them. They take pictures, reflective tape, just by looking at the changes in pictures, they know exactly what to do. Programming math. On the bottom right-hand side, that is a student-built radar screen. Using the camera and using the reflective images, they were able to figure out exactly where every other robot was on the field. So what we're involved with is mainstreaming smarts, uh, teaching kids to compete. Now, some of the kids who are smart, you know, they don't get an opportunity to be on a team. We provide an opportunity for them to be on a team, to learn teamwork, and by making part, you know, you have, in order to be successful in these competitions, you have to be smart. You have to do your homework, you have to listen to your teachers, and the, in order, and they get to make these trade-offs, and it teaches them all of that, you know, good design. So this, this is what we get, this, these are the students we get. Chess players, you know, everyone expects that. But we get football, uh, players on our team. We get the basketball players. We get wallflowers, people who are shy. We get these students. Oh, we also get some F students, by the way. We get girls. We get all of them. At the end of the, at the, end of the day, our results are they go to college, their grades improve, and most of them, um, actually, almost all of them get scholarships to go to college. And, and, the, and the most important thing, they become very confident individuals why I do this. These are the kids. And th this, is, this happens every year in April as they jump up and cheer. But besides that, they also show this kind of you know, love for us. Every day we go and mentor them. So, oh, robotics goes places. I don't know if you watched the Macy's 4th of July parade, but our robots were at the 4th of July parade at the very beginning. So, um, for you guys, if you know software, you have no hardware experience, and you want to learn some, or it's the opposite, which, you know, and, and you have little, no, oh, I forgot to put software there, little or no software experience, a robotics team is perfect for you. It brings together all kinds of people. And so these are our, our opportunities. You know, we have a robotics program. If you want to get involved, you know, in programming, building, web, web design, public speaking, research support, graphics arts, business, our programs touch all of that. And so some of you go talk to me about starting a US uh, local STEM chapter. 
it's to help with your robotics program. We can do that. And I want to thank you for listening to me. This is our website. And I'll be here all day to talk with any of you that are interested in getting involved with uh, starting a US STEM team or getting involved in mentoring with your local robotics team. Uh, your robotics team, there are robotics team all over the country. So there are opportunities to do this everywhere, no matter where you are. Thank you.